Okay, so we're going to do a little webinar here that will talk about what to sell on eBay. And this is specifically to cover the question of what's hot, right? That's a question that I, I hear all too often and uh, I feel that it's a bit of a dangerous question because the, the what what's hot mentality or, or question uh, is something that uh, that tells me your mindset is saying, hey, it's the product, it's all about the product, so if I just know what product to to sell, then I'll be able to make money. And that simply isn't the case. That's not the way any business uh, runs, uh, really, overall, because there's much more to the business than just what we're selling. So what I want to clarify here is some of the options for selling on eBay and to help you get an idea of what to sell because we've got to break into that creative pattern, that creative process where you are looking for items to, to sell all the time and finding them and seeing them and recognizing them as options. And I'll give you a prime example of that creative um, power and, and the way it should look. I was talking to a, a client earlier today and he um, he mentioned to me that he's going to have his son create a sign. I, I said something, uh, uh, you know, a little motivational term to help him get going, and uh, and I and I can't even remember what we had what I had said at the time or what he decided. But he, his comment was, "I'm going to have my woodworking son build me a sign that says that, and I'm going to put it up in my house." And I thought, you know, that's a really cool idea. And so it was neat that he grasped that idea that the the um, the term that I had stated was something good to remember. And it was so impactful for him, in fact, that he wanted to create a sign and put it up in his home so he could see it every day. But I took it a step further. And what we'll do here is uh, just do a search for wooden sign. And I said, well, gosh, that's a great idea. Maybe you ought to pass that on to other people. Why not make two of those signs and put one for sale up on eBay? And when you hang it up uh, in your house, list it up there on eBay. And so let's just look at some examples here to, to help you. And that's what I'm talking about with getting into the creative mind is, is to recognize that anything sells. Anything will sell. I mean, look at this. A two-foot tall, 24-inch, stunning bronze, nude, or wooden base, um, koa, wood, sign. You know, it's a, a statue. It should say statue in there, and I'm, I'm surprised that this person isn't putting that in there, asking that much for something. But, so we put in wooden sign for a search here. Now, what if we go down to sold listings? We can see there are 82,000, right up here, 82,019 results. And if we come down here and look at sold items, we can see that out of that 82,000, there are 13,000 sold. Okay, And so that gives us a little bit of insight on, on the, uh, the numbers there, you know, of how many might sell. So if we look at the um, calculator here, see if I can figure this out, uh, what the sell-through rate is there. And I, I don't even know how to calculate it because I'm, I'm not a math whiz. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, if we, if we, in fact, let's, let's say we want uh, out of, uh, I can't remember how many was it. Let's just check that real quick here. We'll do it on here. So we've got, all right, 82,000. So 82,019 active listings. And if we divide that by 12%, that's 98. And so it's more than that. So I'm just trying to do the math here on that. And I'm slaughtering it. So anyway, that's that's not what this is about. So let's not. Whoops. All right. So anyway, the idea is everything sells. It's not about the product. It's first about mindset, believing and recognizing that you can do anything, and then second about being creative. 
look around you and look at everything that that you see and that that is in your life or in your house or in your yard or in your neighborhood or, or in your state. Uh, look at thrift stores. Look at uh, uh, yard sales. Look at online stores. Anything and everything will sell. All right. So it's not about the product. So don't ask what's hot and look for what's hot. And here's the other problem behind that. If you look at what's hot, what are, what are the top selling products? Well, they're probably uh, an iPhone, for example. It's one of the hottest items out there right now. There's 184,000 people to compete with on the iPhone. The other side of that is getting these iPhones for a good price, unless you've got a resource to a surplus auction or uh, or liquidation or something like that, you're not going to be picking these up at a price that you can turn around and resell them for a profit. Okay, And so that is another uh, thing to think about is recognize that the hottest products also have the highest competition. So it's not about selling what's hot. All right? It's, uh, it's about looking at all opportunities and everything that, uh, that is out there. So, uh, so there are two sides to this. There are, there's the dropship opportunity, the dropship side, and what do we do? Uh, you know, how do we come up with products to sell on dropship? And then there's the hands-on approach where we're handling the product. With hands-on, the great thing about that uh, approach is you don't buy anything until you see that there's a very high uh, potential that it will sell for much higher than it costs you. So for example, if we look at this item right here, and let's go in and look at the original item. So here's a love sign, okay? A, a love decor sign, simple cutout uh, on uh, MDF or something like that, pressed fiberboard. DIY wooden, um, Love Signs new five pack with free shipping. So there's five of them that sold for $26. So if you can find these, and what is the uh, dimensions on this? It doesn't even tell us the dimensions. I mean, this is a terrible listing. <laughs> Ultimately, they, they really should have some dimensions there. They look like they're fairly small. Uh, you think about the size of that tag and, and the, the thing that's on it. So we're probably talking about five inch items. So uh, being pressed wood, they're probably going to weigh more than a pound. They may not. Uh, you know what? These probably don't. So they're probably shipping first class. They're going to cost five bucks or less to ship. And so that's one of the first things to think about is what are my costs, right? What are my shipping costs? What are my fees on eBay? So let's say we've got five dollars shipping costs, and we can buy these on discount, uh, you know, five pack of them for uh, say two dollars at some discount store or, or craft store that has them on sale or something. Okay, So that's our cost of $7. If we sell them for 26 then we're going to have 10%. That's another $2.60. Let's round that up to $3 with PayPal fees. So we've got $10 cost. So you can quickly just put that you know, together there and think about the cost. So 10 bucks cost, I can see that they're selling for $26. They sold recently for $26. Yeah, it would be worth buying that for two or three dollars. See, I put all of those costs together. Now, if it weighs more than a pound, then our shipping goes from four or five dollars up to seven and a half to eight dollars minimum. And that's if you use a flat rate envelope or, or a small flat rate box. Okay, if you just use a regular box and do it priority mail, then y you may end up paying more than that. So there's some things to think about there as you're looking at stuff to buy in hand. Do the research. If you feel confident that you can sell it for a, a significant profit, then great, buy it. If you're standing there in a discount store or Walmart or craft store or, or thrift store or wherever, uh, if it's low enough that, I would say if it's low enough that you can at least triple your money uh, without thinking about the fees, the shipping and, and the, the fees, then you're probably okay because you'll come out of it with at least doubling your money after all the fees, if not a little better. Okay, In this case, it would have been maybe $16 profit potential if that cost is just uh, a couple of bucks. All right, so you think about it and you research uh, on your eBay app when you're looking at an item. Now, if it's something that's only going to sell for 20 or 30 bucks and it's going to cost me 10 bucks, I'm not going to buy it. 
that's not enough uh, markup for me to, to mess with it. Look for something else. There are plenty of other great opportunities and great things that you can work with. And then a lot of times you will be able to charge shipping as well. So think about that. Like all of these that you see that don't say free shipping. This one here where you see free shipping, they're not charging shipping. That's all they got. 26 bucks shipping came out of that. But this one where it doesn't say free shipping, they're charging shipping, they're charging shipping here, shipping charge, shipping charge, shipping charge. So a lot of these, they're charging shipping. There's another free shipping. And so that helps you to, as you're looking at things, look at all those details. Are they charging shipping? Are they doing free shipping for similar items to what you have to sell? So everything's an option. If you're going to a thrift store and you're looking around at those shelves, look at everything. Just Look at everything that that might have some kind of value. Look for any kind of uh, markings, product numbers, model numbers, brands, any of that kind of stuff, and look it up. Uh, that's the way you, you'll handle that. If we're doing a drop ship model, then we're going to take things a, a little different. With a drop ship model, if we wanted to look at other people's listings, we'd go find somebody who looks like they're doing drop ship. So somebody with a a uh, stock photo, this one's from the United Kingdom, so I, I want to, let's change this to U.S. only so that we're looking at things that are within our area. All right, and so we we scroll down here, there we go, we've got one that looks like a stock photo, we'll click on that. And so if you really want to get some ideas, we find, we look for somebody who has high feedback. These guys only have 266, they probably don't have a whole lot more listed unless they're really getting a, uh, and it doesn't even tell us the number of items they list. I don't know why eBay does that sometimes, and sometimes they don't. So we'll back out. We'll look for somebody else. Uh, and I, I would prefer to look for items that have sold at higher prices. Let's look at this one here. All right, 40000 on their feedback. So these guys better have some, some uh, listings. And I'm looking at their items, and again, I don't know why, but it's not showing the number of results. It should show me right there the number of items that they have listed, and for some reason it's not showing that. But they have quite a few, so normally you'll see that there. And then we can come over and look at sold items. And again, it should show us the number of listings that they have sold there so that we can get an idea of what they are selling currently. And you can change that. Over here on the sort, we can change that to end date recent first, so you can see what has been selling recently. There we go, 354 results of what has sold recently. Okay, and that's within the last three months. When you're seeing this history, that's three months history there. So 100 uh, and, and some items a month, they've got 600 uh, items um, sold there. So that gives you something to look at of items that are currently being listed by a big seller, and we want to look at those uh, uh, feedback scores and find somebody with high feedback, and that'll give us an idea of what they're selling. But realistically, if we're going to do dropship, we've got to get thousands of items up there. And so that's where I recommend using a system like the AutoDS, where it automatically lists products for you. You don't have to think about it. It's all uh, automatic for you. Uh, and everything, uh, you know, they they monitor everything for you. So that's that's the way to go with dropship in my mind because you need to be doing thousands of items to make that profitable, and that's going to require some tools to help you document that. So I hope that helps with the idea of what to sell on eBay. I have other webinars I've uh, um, taught this topic that you can go uh, research. Uh, on uh, uh, what to sell, but um, ultimately, just to, you know, don't think too much about what the product is. It's more about the volume, getting it up there, doing your best with the the listings. It's volume, you know, primarily volume if you're doing dropship, and then doing the proper research if you're doing items that you are going to handle yourself.